Hi, today we are going to talk about proteins, and um, this is chapter seven in your book. So we want to just delve into what are proteins, why do we care? So they make up 50% of your body's dry weight. They um, are estimate that there are over 200,000 different proteins in our body, and um, most of our body's functions and life processes <laughs> Um, are revolving around protein, so extremely important molecule. Okay, so here are a couple examples of what uh, proteins do in our body. Um, they make new cells and components of cells. All our major structures, our hair, our nails, um, our muscles, are all proteins. Enzymes. Enzymes are mole protein molecules that uh, break down components. Um, we talked a little bit about enzymes um, in our digestive system. We'll talk a little bit more about that, but they are extremely important and they are types of proteins. Many lubricants in our bodies are high in proteins and clotting compounds. Antibodies, which are the backbone of our immune system, um, are uh, largely proteins. Um, hormones and neurotransmitters, of course, these are messengers in our bodies that keep things going for us. Neurotransmitters, how we think, how we feel, um, all these are extremely important molecules. And finally, uh, they are an important energy source in um, situations where there aren't enough other uh, calories to allow for normal energy production, which we have already said in previous lectures that um, our main form of energy comes from carbohydrates and fats. Um, so, moving on. Okay, so proteins have different shapes, um, and uh, so that makes them very interesting. So here's a bunch of examples. Fibers that contract, um, actin and myosin, are uh, found in our muscles. Uh, hormones are usually strings of peptide peptide strings, and we'll talk about peptides in one second. Hemoglobin is a transport molecule for oxygen in our blood. Antibodies we just mentioned are the backbone of our immune system. Enzymes that join or split molecules. Many of our uh, metabolic pathways are made up of um, our, our function because of enzymes. Uh, in our Cell membrane uh, proteins make up these cylindrical tubes that allow for molecules to, to pass in and out of our cells. And collagen fibers are uh, important for our structure. Um, so let's just look at a protein, basic amino acid. Okay, so um, the Back, the building blocks of a protein are amino acids, and I just want to point out that the amino acid has two major parts to it, an am amino group, which dictates what type of amino acid it is, and this carbon skeleton. And um, the carbon skeleton, you will notice, has carbon and hydrogen and oxygen, which is what the backbone of our fats and our carbohydrates are as well, and that will become important as we learn a little bit more of how these amino acids act in our body. Okay, so it's really important to understand that we have um, essential and non-essential amino acids, and just like we talked about in the fat lecture, uh, there are essential means that you must obtain these compounds, in this case amino acids, from your diet. Um, Non-essential means that you can uh, get, uh, our bodies are able to utilize substances that are available to us um, to create these amino acids. And here's the list of them. Um, and we have the essential amino acids. I'm sorry, this is a little bit fuzzy, so I'm going to just go to the next um, 
because that's a little clearer and I think you can see it better. So of these amino acids, the, this nine, there are nine essential, 11 non-essential, um, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, valine, these are all essential. We must get them in the diet. Um, cysteine, glutamine, glycine, proline, tyrosine, and arginine are actually considered marginally essential if you don't have some of the right cofactors for uh, some of the, the um, building blocks that allow for these uh, amino acids to be um, developed in our body, then we are, we can become uh, deficient in these, in these areas. And that can be a problem for sure. Um, just to give you an idea and bring it back into the real world here. So glutamine and glycine and serine together make glutathione, which is a molecule in our bodies that is responsible. It's, it's considered our master antioxidant. And antioxidants are important because they help keep us from becoming, um, having a lot of oxidative stress. Um, we also know a little bit about methionine, and methionine is a key uh, amino acid in the, our detoxification systems. Um, they, they call it methylation. It's a process that our bodies use to detoxify compounds that we come in contact with, whether it's in the environment, in our food. Um, our liver is constantly detoxifying uh, products in our bodies and helping us to eliminate them. So methionine is a very important um, molecule or amino acid for that. Tryptophan, you may have heard of tryptophan um, in uh, Turkey, for instance, Turkey is very has very high levels of tryptophan in it, and um, tryptophan is t um, is known for making you sleepy. S tryptophan uh, converts to serotonin, which is our feel good hormone, and it's why after Thanksgiving dinner, many people feel very relaxed and often fall asleep, particularly if they've had a large amount of turkey. Um, okay, now, so here are your macronutrients. We've talked about carbohydrates, strings of monosaccharides, um, make up polysaccharides, um, lipids. We talked last time about fatty acids and how they get grouped together with a glycerin molecule into fatty acids. Well, proteins use the amino, individual amino acids to make, um, peptide chains. And I think we have a picture. This is a peptide chain. Individual um, amino acids are linked together into peptides. And this happens in our bodies. Our bodies are able to do that. So how do we use them and how does this work? So protein digestion is actually a very interesting topic and I will be going over that just a little bit more detail when we talk about digestion. But just understand that our stomachs have high, high levels of, um, of hydrochloric acid in them and this hydrochloric acid helps to um, activate a protein enzyme called pepsin, and pepsin is what helps to break down proteins. Um, it's the first step of protein digestion, and that happens in the stomach. Then as the contents move into your small intestine, we have pancreatic enzymes um, uh, that help bring, break down, um, these are proteases, um, help break down proteins um, as, as our body, um, as, as the food moves through our bodies. Okay. Um, once we get them into our, uh, bloodstream, come on, Mike, there we go. 
Um, so here, once, once we digest those proteins from our food and they get, and they transport through our mucosa into our bloodstream, we have this, uh, amino acid pool of individual amino acids and thing, what our bodies can do with those is we have a few choices. So protein turnover is when our bodies either are breaking down proteins in our bodies or building up proteins in our body. Um, so building up, for instance, collagen, or um, if we have um, an injury, uh, we need some protein to rebuild uh, the tissue. If, if we don't need that, or we have plenty of amino acids, more than what is needed for this protein, for our structural needs and our hormonal needs and some of these other things that our body uses them for, then our, our bodies can do something with the excess. So we can create sugar or glucose from uh, um, amino acids. And so this is, this is uh, what happens if we don't have enough carbohydrates or fats to give us energy. So these um, uh, glucose molecules can be converted into uh, energy and we can produce ATP. Or as in the case of when you if you recall from um, the first lecture, you need to have uh, a certain amount of glucose in your, uh, in your bloodstream. If your gl blood glu glucose levels fall too low, one of the uh, avenues that we can m uh, make more glucose is by breaking down amino acids. All right. Then finally, amino acids, if we have way too many of them, they can be converted into triglycerides and into fatty acids. And we talked about the fatty acids last um, in the fats lecture um, that can be converted into uh, triglycerides and stored as fat in our adipose tissue. All right. So... If you recall the structure of our amino acid, it had the amino group and the carbon skeleton. Um, this is what is known as deamination. Uh, and this is how the body changes uh, things around and makes things into sugars or fats. Because remember, we said the carbon skeleton is got the same building blocks as the as carbohydrates and fats, but what's different is this amino group. And so the amino group. This is an example of glutamic acid, which is an amino acid, giving its amino group up to pyruvic acid here. And whoops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Oops, go back. Um, pyruvic acid. Um, gets converted um, when you add the amino, add the amino group on, it turns it into alanine. All right. So processing unneeded amino acids, this is just a review of what we just said. For this example, they're using glutamate or glutamine, which is essentially the same amino acid, and it donates its amino group, um, and it gets hooked onto another hydrogen atom to form ammonia. And ammonia is excreted through uh, urea, through our kidneys in urine. The carbon skeleton is given up, and our liver can either make glucose, fatty acids, or produce energy. All right. So how much protein do you need? You need... Um, the, the, enough to uh, make, to have your body have all its uh, needs met and that must be balanced with the amount of nitrogen that's lost through your urine. And that happens, um, you know, when we slough off skin, when we grow new hair, all these are protein or nitrogen losses, I should say. So if you're in positive nitrogen balance, 
during growth, you need a, you need a little bit more. During pregnancy, definitely. If you're recovering from an injury, if you do a lot of resistant exercises, all these things are, um, are indicative of increased need for nitrogen. Um, bed rest, injuries, things like that, um, burns, you're going to have a, 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 drain, a drain on your nitrogen and um, these people need more. Okay. How much do you need? How do you figure that out? So the RDA for healthy adults is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So we can figure that out. And we just said that protein needs increase when there's times of growth. Um, in this situation, this poor little boy um, has severe protein deficiency. He's not getting enough protein in his diet. And what happens is his body starts using um, his own protein in, his, in the muscles uh, become wasted because he's using that just for um, energy, and that is a extremely sad situation for sure. Okay, using so you can determine your own protein needs and uh, use the RDA formula of protein per kilogram of body weight. So, what is the RDA protein um, for protein for a person weighing 165 pounds? You can calculate that by um, you convert your weight in pounds to weight in kilograms. You do that by dividing it by 2.2. So, a 165 pound person um, has is 75 kilograms. You multiply your kilograms of body weight by 0.8, and so that equals 60. Therefore, a person weighing 165 pounds will meet his RDA for protein by consuming 60 grams of protein per day. Now, your protein uh, will go up or down. Your protein needs will go up or down depending on your activity levels um, and how healthy you might be at any particular time. But um, that is the way you can figure out your basic protein need. Okay, I'll see you in the next lecture.